car, boat, or RV. Due to our recent expansion, we offer units that range in size from as small as a bedroom closet to as big as a one-car garage. All of our units are inside and kind of controlled with 24-hour access and security. Our leases run month to month, so you're not locked into a long-term commitment, giving you the flexibility to move your belongings out the minute you purchase your new home. Stop by today or give us a call. 530-8003. That's 530-8003. Jessup Premium Storage. The cool, clean, and secure. This is Sammy Dixon at the all-new Mike Birch Ford in Blackshear. If you haven't had a chance to come see our new state-of-the-art showroom, then there's no better time than right now. While you're here, take advantage of huge savings on new Ford trucks. Get more than $10,000 off from select new F-150s while they last. You must hurry. They're going fast. Over $10,000 off on the best-selling truck in America for 39 straight years. You can also take advantage of money-saving low, low interest rates on new and certified pre-owned vehicles. Our new bigger showroom means more inventory, and that means bigger savings for you. Come to the house at Good Service Bill and buy from Mike Birch Ford, and we'll give you five free oil changes following 36,000 mile bumper to bumper warranty. If you're looking for an incredible deal on a new or pre-owned vehicle from the dealer who has always put you first, stop the search. Call the all new Mike Birch Ford in Blackshear. This is Sammy Dixon saying thank you. Thank you very much for your business. And good morning. It is a Friday, good Friday, 25th day of March. Butch Hubbard here with you on WIFO FM in just a 105.5 on your FM dial, two minutes after 8 o'clock. Currently, we have 59 degrees here in southeast Georgia. We do have a 70% chance of showers today, 60% tonight. High today near 77 degrees. The Altamaha River levels are 9.4 feet and just barely falling. It is now time for the world-famous Butch and Bob Show, brought to you by Jessup Premium Storage out here on the Waycross Highway, Parker Insurance and Realty on Macon Street in downtown Jessup, and by Mike Birch Ford in Blackshear. Bob, we've got a couple of guests in this morning, but we're going with uh, Michael Kickwire yeah, first, right? Kickwire's in. She's got the update on... Jessup, let's move, or Wayne County, yes. let's move. What's it called? I'm sorry. Wayne County, let's move. Wayne County, let's move. Mm -hmm. okay. Try to encompass the whole county instead of just the yeah, city I, of Jessup. I like it. <laughs> Thanks. Um, yeah, I have the uh, week two results. So this is percentages of weight loss from both week one and two. It's all put together, same with minutes of activity. Um, so I'll start with the highest percentage of weight loss for teams. First place, we have Team Hope. Um, that's hospice. It's their team. Um, they are at 47.75%. Um, which is a huge amount. Second place is Move In Our Aces, um, which I believe is a team from the high school, and they're at 35.12%. And then third place, we have Velocity Team 2, and they're at 33.66%. Um, highest percentage of weight loss for individuals. First place, we have Timia, I think I'm saying that right, Fessel, um, which is with Team Hope again, 10.94%. Um, uh, second place, we have Janet Tyre. I'm not sure what um, team she's from, but she's at 8.81%. And in third place, we have Xander Roberts, who I believe is with um, FBA. And they, he's at 6.61%. And then uh, we have another section is most active minutes. And so for team, we have first place is Velocity Team 2. Um, and they have like over 14,000 minutes, which is um, a huge amount. Second place, we have Moving Our Aces. And third place, Velocity Team 1. And then I uh, kind of made the decision to do away with um, the individual active minutes. I did a little math, and there's some people that are, I think they may be uh, putting down their, I don't know, steps and stuff like some people have eight hours worth of activity well i mean we all do so i'm kind of doing away with that because i'm not sure what they're considering as active minutes and if they are exercising for seven or eight hours a day that's great um but i don't know if no, that's true or not not. <laughs> so i'm like i don't even have time for that so i'm doing away with that uh so we'll just do teams and it's still adding in some of their minutes but it makes a little bit more sense than just one person you know doing eight hours a day for a week worth of minutes. Um, so again, if you are listening and you're on a team, please don't forget to turn in your uh, minutes of activity. So active minutes, not just walking to your fridge or walking to you know, your desk or whatever. Um, we're talking like going to a class, making an effort to get out, you know, walk around your neighborhood, a whatever that e may be. exercise right. program with running, um, jogging, uh, going to yeah, a class, whatever. Besides... Not putting a step on you and counting up the steps all day <laughs> right. long for eight hours. Right. I see what you're saying. Um, yeah, so um, active minutes. Um, and if you can, if you're, I've gotten some that if you're riding a bike, you put, you know, two miles on a bike. Well, I don't know how long it took you to do that. So right. I'm just 
figuring out what the average is. I just Google what's the average time it takes to ride two miles on a bike, and that's right. what I'm using. So it could be more, it could be less. So please let me know. Sure. Um, but make sure to get that to your captain on Monday. And then your captains, if you're listening, please get that information to me by Tuesday at 5. Um, no exceptions. And I no did exceptions. cut some people off. So. Oh. Um, because I do have, you know, my regular job. <laughs> I can't <laughs> slave over this every single day. Um, so, yeah, Tuesday by 5, please. And I've been pretty lenient on that. People are just texting me pictures of their sheets. That's all I need. Um, and then we had, again, we had two teams that didn't report anything. So, um, we're Not good. in the week three. If, if I haven't gotten anything from you, I'm assuming you're not doing it, so kind of cut you out. <laughs> um, so, please let me know uh, your stuff so I can... Um, enter you into this. And how long does this go on for? Um, we have two more weeks. Two more weeks. We're in week three. So this was last week's results. So they'll report week three stuff on Monday. Um, but yeah, we have two more weeks. Okay. So Sounds if good. I haven't gotten anything, I'm just thinking that you're probably not participating right. anymore. Really so, not, right? yep. so, and I see the names um, and they're pretty consistent. But the ones I haven't seen in a while, I take you up a list. So if you go up to a gym and uh, they say you're not on the list anymore, it's because you haven't been turning your stuff in. You're not going to get the benefits. Those captains, right? Right, the captain's exactly. Captains got to be turning them in. Yes. Okay. So uh, that's it. Keep up the good work. These are great percentages, and I'm really excited. We've, yep. we've had great participation. Mm -hmm. Once again, the official title is Wayne County. Let's move. Wayne County. Let's move. Yeah. Well, we know that you got to be moving. Yes. You've got a meeting to get to. All yes, dressed I up do. here in your little black dress, looking <laughs> good on this uh, Friday you. morning. Yep, got to go present some stuff to our commissioners. That's right. Yeah. Got to go do your regular job now, huh? Yes, I do. <laughs> okay, Mike, kick lighter. <laughs> Thank in here. you, guys. You said you're going to be back Monday. Yes, for Taste of Wayne. Okay, for mm -hmm. Taste of Wayne. Yep. Okay. All right, Michael, thanks for coming in. All right, we'll be back more of the world famous Butch and Bob show. We got a candidate in here this morning, the second candidate for the uh, runoff from the school board show. And Daniel will be on the, morning, uh, on the air with us in a minute. The biggest, most awesome community wide Easter family fun day in Easter egg hunt will be held Saturday, March 26th, on the grounds of Unity Church of God in Jessup. It's the 46th annual WIFO and WLOP Easter egg hunt, and all kids ages 1 to 12 are invited for a day of fun, festivities, and food. It's all free. Enjoy bounce houses and slides, pony rides, train rides, plus the latest interactive ride called Meltdown. And of course, hunt for thousands of prize eggs filled with candy and gifts. So mark it on your calendar. The WIFO 105.5 FM Community Wide Easter Family Fun Day and Easter Egg Hunt, Saturday, March 26th, beginning at 11 a.m. and is co-sponsored and hosted by Unity Church of God, adjacent to Bill Mars Park in Jessup. Also sponsored by Sybil's Family Restaurant, Jessup Tire Shop, Solid Rock Christian Academy, and DNR Lawn Care and Landscape. So kids ages 1 to 12, don't you dare miss all the fun at the biggest and most awesome community-wide Easter Family Fun Day and Easter Egg Hunt, Saturday, March 26th from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. on the grounds of Unity Church of God. That's right, Raider right Shine. Got plenty of room inside to do everything and just in case it's raining outside. But uh, Unity Church of God, Big Dog Country Easter Egg Hunt tomorrow, Saturday, starting at 11 a.m. And uh, plenty of room inside in case uh, things are a little wet outside. All right, Bob, we've got another guest this morning. As everyone knows, District 4 School Board race is going to be decided Tuesday night. Uh, whether or not anybody votes or not here. <laughs> right now, just 41 votes after the early voting period. You said before we went on there that you find that people just don't trust the early voting process. Is that what you're saying? Uh, that's what I'm saying, Bob. I've asked uh, several people about early voting, and they said they'll vote on Election Day because they don't trust early voting. They're afraid that their uh, votes may get lost somewhere in the electronic system. Uh, I guess uh, back in the Bush era when we had the hanging chads back in Florida kind of put a, a damper on uh, some of the people's uh, trust in our system. So hopefully a big turnout Tuesday is what you're telling me. I'm hoping for a big turnout on Tuesday. Well, the first election had four candidates in there and they got close to 30% of the vote out. So I said there's 1,526 or 1,526, I can't remember the exact number. It's over 1,500 votes in that district. And like I said, only 41 as of four days of early voting, which is not very good. Well, in actuality, Bob, uh, although we have 15, over 1,500 uh, voters in that district, uh, there were only a little over 500 that actually uh, voted in that preliminary election. So only those voters will be allowed to vote in this final election to make the decision on who will be the candidate, um, who will be the representative for school board uh, district four. I don't think that's right. I think as long as you're yeah, anybody can vote, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. That's, that's not what the registrar's office told me. That only the folks who voted the first time? Only the folks who voted the first time 
are eligible to vote in this election. That is what the registered office told me. Mm -hmm. They're giving me incorrect I've information. Uh, I had never heard of it before e either, but yeah. that was the information that was given from, to me. In fact, I was given a list of those individuals so that I could mail out uh, postcards. Uh, people should be receiving postcards in the mail with my information on it, asking for their support in uh, either today or tomorrow. So if Kay or any of the folks down there at the registrar's offices listening, can you vote in the runoff? I think as long as you're a registered district four voter, you can vote. I mean, that's the information that was given. I know. I, I know. We have yeah. to go with them. We, Bob and I have that all the time. We get information right. given to us. Sometimes it's right, sometimes it's wrong. So if anybody down there, Kay or any of the folks down there at the registrar's office is listening, and uh, if you uh, can you vote uh, in the uh, runoff? Uh, between Candace and Sherry, if you did not vote in the um, uh, regular election that was held three weeks ago. Yeah, because Sherry and Daniel would like to know that information as well, so yeah. I can solicit those other people. Because I've never heard that before. I mean, uh, if you, you know, as long as you're a registered voter, you can vote in, at any time that you want, in anything that you want. Right? right. As long as you're registered. That's what I thought. Yeah. But that was the information I was giving. Yeah, I will yeah. check on that, but I don't. I don't think that's the correct information, but we'll, we'll find out. But let's talk about the issues. You know, the big issue in District 4, the, I don't know, they said you were at the school board meeting on Tuesday. Is that correct? That's correct. So you got to see what transpired with Betty Sapp and the issue. With Prince okay, Kay, Kay, just, Kay just text in. Uh, all can vote. All can vote. All so can send vote. out everybody there, Sharon. All can vote. Okay. Okay, I'll can vote. That's what I've always heard. That's all about. Because yeah. well, sometimes, thought, I, but sometimes I've only voted in the runoff. Yeah. So I knew, I knew that was bad information. Yeah, well, that's what I was thought. Either bad that's or what I was, that's what I was getting. Or, that was information I was getting. Or misunderstood information. One of the two. I don't, know, don't know which one it was. <laughs> don't know which one it was, but but now you know. Now everybody, I know. Everybody can vote. Everybody in District Four can out. vote. That's okay. Why, that's why I've been harping all. Months about the number of people vote, okay. right? Okay. We need okay. people to. There's 1,500 votes out there. Where are these people at? So, right. Okay. 30, and they're going to make it. Whoever gets on this board is going to affect the decision of for 30,000 people in Wayne County. It bothers me that just in 41, somebody said it best. Why should we even listen to District Four? They only have 41 people vote. What 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 weight do they have? So, that's well, the, although we may not have any weight as far as the voting is concerned, because people mm -hmm. may not be getting out to vote. They vote that those people in those constituents still matter, know, even though matter, they may not be voting. And I, I, I'm just saying, oh, right. I agree. I agree. Right. It's a big debate, you know. Because once again, it's based on the kids. The kids uh, cannot control what the parents do or don't do. Uh, so uh, therefore, my concern is what is going to affect our children. And there's less than 2,000 families uh, uh, nationwide that determine what we all watch on television all the time because that's about the. The um, the survey that the the samples they had through Nielsen. Nielsen, yeah, through Nielsen. But it is a shame you don't you want more people voting. Correct. You want you want a greater percentage uh, of people voting. Uh, you'd like to have 40, 50, 60 percent or more of the registered voters in any district vote. But it would be a shame if it's less than 10 percent of the vote. That's correct. To get a, a good consensus of what good consensus of what what the folks in District Four really want. want. Yeah, correct. I didn't realize your phone was your cousin. She was here Tuesday. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yep, that is my cousin. That is correct. Well, that's gonna make for an interesting family reunion. Isn't it? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> so let's get back to the issue. I said you're there Tuesday. Your thoughts on what transpired Tuesday, and your thoughts on? I said Candace says she's in support of Princess Dial. Prince Dial wasn't recommended back. Where do you stand on that issue? Well, my um, stand on that issue is whenever I look at something, I base it on facts. Okay, right now, from what I'm hearing from the water cooler, because you can't get anything from board members because it's for them to talk to us, um, the facts are uh, I would like to know what her lease evaluation is. Because Georgia has put in place an evaluation um, uh, element for us to be able to look at, and it's called a leaks, L K E S, leadership keys of effectiveness, effectiveness system so that we can um, evaluate our leaders. Uh, teachers have the same thing in place. It's called TEACHS, which is the same thing, except teachers affecting this right. case, okay? So my thing is, what is her evaluation? Are we basing the decision on uh, Dr. Dow based on what we feel as far as um, a couple of people? Or are we basing this on the actual evaluation? And, and, and you can't get a, an answer on that at this time.
then you can't because they can't talk about personnel as you will Correct. find out if you get voted in so it's but just they, one of those things they don't discuss personnel but people that schools talk to understand that to right. understand that but what i would like for the uh the board members and if i'm elected i would like if uh once a person is uh we decide that person is ineffective what are we basing this on are we just basing this on a couple of teachers saying that they don't like the way this person runs things. You know, nobody's going to satisfy everybody. Right. You know, it is what it is, you know. But if they're doing their job, then uh, that's what we should be basing on. If, are they providing the best education environment for our children? That's what we need to be basing our decision on. We Not whether I like her or don't like her, but the facts of the matter. Okay. Well, one of the facts of the matter is, is you know, and this is something that's publicized at school board meetings, is mm -hmm. test scores. You know, they go by CCRPI test scores. And for the last several years, those test scores at that school have dramatically dipped, where everybody else has either gone up or stayed the same. So I think that's one fact that they're looking at as well. And it's all about student achievement. And apparently, the student achievement at that school has, has been lacking the last couple of years. So where do you stand on that? Well, we're a year and a half into Dr. Dow. Uh, we give a general a football coach about three to four years in order to turn a program around. We had not, by the time they made this decision, which is around the 1st of January, the, the buzz was out, you had not even given her a full two years. You're going to give a football coach three, four years in order to turn a school, uh, turn his football program around, but we're not going to give a, uh, a principal time enough to turn this system around. It's not going to happen overnight. Um, you need to look at the things that she's implementing in order to uh, – try to uh, reach this goal of moving our test scores up. The other thing is, you when the you... Point. The football coach had turned it around. If your football teams are three and seven, you want to go forward. This is the opposite. The test scores were good, and for two years, they're going down. So it's not... That's the point. The point is, the facts are, they're not turning around. They're going backwards. So okay. that's one of the facts that is out there. And talking to those people at that school and that staff, they're not happy with the situation and it had to be addressed. So now do we have the same teachers that are there? Because you look at that, you can't look at just that leader. You if you have the same teachers that were there and the test scores were higher. Now, what are the personnel, what are the teachers doing? Because they're the ones who disseminate the information to the kids. They're the ones who teach those kids. So if they're those test scores are going down, that's a direct correlation with the teacher as well How as the administrator. So you can't just put blame on just one person. It takes a village to get our kids through what they need to get through. You understand what I'm saying? I think you've answered my first question. I'll go back to that. And I, I think you already answered it, but I'll ask it again. Okay. Where do you stand on Princess Dow? Are you in favor of Princess Dow staying at the school or not in favor? Of her? I assume Based, you're saying you're you're in support of Princess Dow. Right now, I'm in support of Princess Dow because I don't have any information that, to me, that directly says that she needs to be removed. We have kids that leave uh, Martha Ross. We have parents who take these our kids and they transport them to Odom. They transport these uh, school. It's almost like a private school situation. You know, it you know it is what it is. I might be talking too much, but I know what I see and I know what's going on. So you have kids that are being transported to these other kids, these other schools who may make higher test scores. But once that happens, you it, uh, it screws the uh, test scores at Martha Ross Smith. It's almost like comparing a private school to a public school. Martha Ross Smith, whoever, uh, whoever come, that's who we teach, or that's who they teach. You know what I'm saying? Well, as opposed to we can't pick and choose which kids are going to take our test, which kids are going to attend, attend that school. Whoever comes to that school, that's who those teachers are uh, responsible for, uh, for teaching. And that goes back to the uh, laying the responsibility on the teachers. They have a tough job at Martha Ross Smith. I've taught at Martha Ross Smith. They have a tough job. So, and that's why I was going about, uh, it takes a village. It not only takes the teachers, it not only takes the administrator, it also takes the parents taking an active role in their children's lives and their children's education. It's going to take everybody to turn this thing around and get us to where we need to be. So basically you're saying right now you don't have any information that would cause you to be um, 
uh, take a look at the situation and say that, that she may have to go because you don't have any facts right now. The I facts that you have right now is she should stay, but you're not in there. You don't have behind the scene facts. And let's say that you are elected in next Tuesday and you're sworn in. If you do become a new school board member and you see things that are raising red flags that apparently some other folks see right now, would you say, OK, I got the facts now. We need to make a change. Would you do that? I'm going to do what's best for the kids. And if that's what's best for the kids, that's what I'll do. But I'm going to do what's best for the kids. OK. All right. Are the test scores, do they matter, though? I mean, two test years scores ago, do matter two years because I've been school. in the school system for 29 years. Right. I also know that uh, I can't compare my third grade test scores this year, honestly, to my third grade test scores last year. Now, I want to talk about Reggie uh, Burgess, Dr. Reggie Burgess, Dr. Williams. And this is one of the things that he did, which I uh, thought was really well. Uh, he did really good. Instead of comparing our uh, sixth grade test scores to the sixth grade test scores from the previous year, he compared the sixth grade test scores from, let's say, 2004 to the seventh grade test scores of 2005. Why? Because those were the same subjects. Those were the same students. And so to see if they made any progress. Because when you're comparing two different groups in a, you know, um, it's an ideal world to think that every single child performs on the exact same level, but they don't. Now, every single child has a capability. Every single child can learn. I believe in that, but they test. They also test differently. Okay. And go ahead, Bob. I was just going to say the facts are, though, getting back to that issue, three years ago, that school was a reward school when Roger Lewis was principal. And since that time, it is not getting better as far as test scores go. The facts are the test scores have decreased where everybody else across the board in Wayne County has either stayed the same or improved. That's all. I just think that's one of the issues. Like I said they don't discuss like I said they don't discuss personnel, but she's not been recommended back. Talking to people at that school, talking to people that are involved in that school. Okay. It just seems there's a big problem with the situation and it was addressed. So well, I'm gonna tell you one of the people that they would move from that school that was an impact while Roger Lewis was there. Uh, as you know, Roger um, had been out quite a bit because you know of, of illness and everything, and uh, that's one of the reasons why he uh, finally retired and everything. Valerie Lawson, I'm gonna say that name again. Valerie Lawson played an integral role in the success of that school, and she was completely looked over for that position. Bella Lawson is no longer at that school. She is now at Arthur Lewis Middle School as the assistant principal. Once again, um, that just like I go back to sports, a football coach is only as good as his assistants. Same thing with a principal. You know, and those are the facts. Well, we can sit here and talk about it all day, but until um, either you or Candace gets behind the scene there and knows what the other school board members know, Right. We could, we're speculating right now. We've all heard things. But, you know, once you get there and get the facts, then you'll be able to make uh, the prudent decisions you said for the for the kids of that school. That's correct. Okay. I'm just saying the decisions already been made. She's not been recommended back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the decisions have been made, <laughs> but you'll have the facts then. Like I said, it's good for us to the board meeting Tuesday, and both candidates are in the same corner of those people there. So that's why I just wanted to really find out where you stand. When people go to vote, they. Now, I do feel like that. Uh, the decision should have been made uh, with a representation from District 4. I do feel like that. But I do I like to say something else, but it's sure. having to do with school board. I want to take this opportunity to congratulate Coach Hobbs and the uh, Wayne County High School Lady Yellow Jackets basketball team on their successful season, making it to the Final Four. They, uh, they were able to uh, surpass my record of going to the Elite Eight. And I am really, really proud of them. I'm really proud of what she's done with this program. And I'm hoping that she continues to work hard and continue to establish the Lady Jacket program. As you know, I was born in Wayne County. I played basketball at Wayne County High School, went on to coach there. And I am a, a Lady Jacket diehard fan. Um, I had the opportunity to watch them at the Final Four. And one of the things that I looked at them and I admired was that they were down 17-3 at halftime and they fought back. They, those girls never gave up. And that's a testament to uh, the coaching staff. And I'd like to um, congratulate them. I also need to congratulate Tania Ward, who yesterday uh, has committed to attend college and play basketball at Fane College. 
Amir Height has also committed to um, Belmont Abbey in North Carolina, in Belmont, North Carolina, to play basketball uh, there as well in a team college and continue to matriculate and to make Wayne County proud. So Isn't that great to see these young folks leave and go off to college and continue to, to, to play sports and just makes us all feel proud, doesn't it? Oh, yes. Makes me very proud of them. Love those Wayne County students going off and playing the sports in college. Oh, yes. And yeah. most importantly, coming back with a degree. With a degree. That's yep. the That's thing the most I important. Besides, but yeah. We don't get to see degree. that, but we get to see the sports part. Yes. yes. <laughs> You're still employed in Liberty County, right? So I'm correct. still employed in Liberty County Board of Education. The question I keep hearing from people says, what, you know, if you're over there at Liberty County employed, and all of a sudden there's a special call board meeting in the daytime, how are you going to get to the board meeting in the daytime? I have discussed that with uh, my uh, folks over there at Liberty County. Uh, we have personal leave days. And I will be able to use my personal leave days for those uh, call meetings. So they're aware of that and they're okay with it? Yes. You're, okay, good. Yes. In fact, Liberty County has a board member, uh, Marcus Scott, who is on the board at Liberty County, who is a, uh, an assistant principal in uh, Glen County. So they are aware and they are they, they are on the okay. same type of situation. So. All right. What are some of the other issues in District 4? Now, the new schools being built, I know they're excited about that. Some people don't even like the fact that the school's being built where it's bad. I've heard that, so that, that's neither here nor there. You're talking on that. Well, um, whether they like where it's being built at, that's where it's being built at. <laughs> can't change that. You can't change that. The land's been cleared. Um, they're starting to be they're built. They're starting to build. In fact, they were saying that they're getting ready to start uh, with the foundation now. They've got everything settled and uh, that type of thing. So um, as far as where it's being built, that's not going to be able to be changed. Uh, what we need to do is um embrace it and move on yeah That's it's a lot more secure situation in today's it society a it's, a, it's a lot more secure than having a major highway in front or railroad in the back well, one way in one way out that's how they're building these schools today a lot of them and right. uh, that's a secure way of doing it well not only that uh when you think about the openness of the school location where it is um you know, we sit in Wayne County and just we hadn't had any serious situations where kids have been snatched and, you know, uh, abducted right. and that type of thing. But with it's sitting right there next to a major highway and the kids are walking out the corridors to one place to the other to the media center. It, anything could happen. So with this new building, the kids won't have to leave out the building for anything other than to go to recess or um, uh that's it, basically. Yep, that's it. The so out, yeah. Exactly. So it, it's a more secure situation for our kids, and I think that once the building is uh, directed, that everybody will be okay with it. Well, right, Sharon. Uh, I know Bob always asks this question at the end, because we're about to give our time here on the World Famous Butch and Bob Show. Is uh, you know the runoff election is going off right now. The election day is um, is on Tuesday. Why should folks uh, in District Four and all registered voters can vote now? All registered voters, voters can vote. Voters we can got vote. that clear. If you're enough. a registered voter in District Four, you can vote in this runoff. Uh, uh, why should they vote for Sharon Daniel? Well, I think they should vote uh, for Sharon Daniel because once again, experience speaks volumes. I am a 29 year educator. Uh, have taught in the Wayne County school system. I've also seen uh, how things have gone in another school system as I'm teaching currently in the Liberty County school system. Um, I'm familiar with um, the evaluations, the challenges that kids are having, and the decisions I make will be based on what is best for our children. Um, I'm also a, a 1987 North Georgia College graduate. I hold a, bachelor, a master's degree from Cambridge College. And uh, like I said, I have 29 years of, of teaching experience. Experience speaks volumes. Okay. All right, Sharon, thank you so much for coming in. Now you got to go okay. contact all those other voters. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have a busy weekend. I am going to have a very busy weekend. Yes, I am. Special yes, plans am. for Easter? I'm going to church Sunday at Benny Union Baptist Church because I have been on the road with those two girls I've been telling you about, right. helping them. Uh, get to the different colleges to uh, solidify their uh, educational future. Okay, so you've been helping them get that um, Yes, scholarship. I have. Between me and Coach, I've been uh, collaborating mm -hmm. Coach. with Coach, yeah. Hires, uh, Coach Hobbs. I Hobbs. still call her Hires. Coach Hobbs and everything. You know, she's uh, about seven months pregnant, so, <laughs> <laughs> so I've been kind of helping her out. 
All right, thanks for coming in. Happy Easter to you. Thank you. Happy Easter. All right, Bob, you got a double hair this afternoon? Rain, maybe? Weatherman permits. Okay. 4.30. New Hampstead here starting at what time? 4.30. 4.30. 4.30 rain. If the rain stays away. That's okay. true. Let's find out. All right, the world famous Butch and Bob Show brought to you by Mike Birch Ford and Black Shear by Jessup Premium Storage out here on the Waycross Highway. And also brought to you by Parker Insurance and Realty on Macon Street in downtown Jessup across from the Heritage Bank. It is 8.30, and we're going to check in the latest news from Fox News Radio. <laughs> Fox News Radio. I'm Dave Anthony. I offer our deepest condolences to the people of Belgium.